Bitcoin is getting closer to its 60 day cycle low. We are preparing for a massive move very, very soon. And in today's video, we are going to talk about whether that move is to the downside, to the upside, and what we can basically expect with Bitcoin in the short, mid, and longer term time frame. We are also going to have a look at a very nice article which is comparing Bitcoin with the dot com bubble. And this is a very, very, very interesting correlation. So, guys, let's jump straight straight into it. Bitcoin on the daily time frame right now is looking pretty clear. We had a breakdown of this rising wedge formation right here. We broke down. Right now we are at some support levels and we can also see that on the relative strength index we actually broke the support as well. So definitely guys structure wise this is not the most bullish thing. And yeah like I said we are at somewhat of a support right here so it would make sense to get a short term bounce however we did lose the support we did lose the daily ema ribbon we did lose the support on the relative strength index so i would expect i would argue that we might get a bounce right here but eventually um get rejected at the next resistance but that we just get a breather from this yeah from this bigger downside move and the interesting thing guys and that is this chart basically and it is the stablecoin dominance this one is actually at a crazy level because we are at the resistance right here we haven't managed to push through the resistance and this chart is going to be the, the most important chart for bitcoin's mid-term and long-term perspective because if this chart breaks out to the upside bitcoin can actually go back to twenty thousand us dollars even to fifteen thousand us dollars and even if it would complete a fifth wave structure right here it's even possible that it would go slightly lower than fifteen thousand us dollars if we get a breakout right here to the upside and we break also this declining resistance from this channel then it's definitely possible that bitcoin is just in still a lot of trouble and that we are going to see a massive correction maybe even lower than 15,000 us dollars because these levels right here was when bitcoin was trading at 15,000 us dollars so if we surpass these levels with an inverse correlation it only makes sense for bitcoin to go lower we are still far away from that scenario right now However, this chart will tell us very, very early if that scenario is going to get a high probability. That's why I'm looking so, so much at this chart, because this is just the most important chart. Because if you just look at Bitcoin, to be honest, it's very confusing. A lot of people say we are right before a bull market. A lot of people say there's a bear market. It's just very difficult when you only look at the structure of Bitcoin. But if we include this structure from the stablecoin dominance, which is definitely our edge right here, then we can have a better grip on the markets. Also on um, uh, Will Alerts, we actually took a short on Bitcoin right here. Then Bitcoin's price did came down so that short is in profit i also said the moment we we touch the resistance right here that could be a moment to take profits at least partial because we are the resistance and yeah we we don't know if we come down back again right here or whether we are going to see that breakout to the upside or even and i think that has slightly a lower probability or even coming down and just break down but that would be extremely bullish that the breakdown of this channel i would even see coincide with a um basically with a maybe etf approval like some crazy bullish news where bitcoin goes on a massive rally because a break below this channel definitely is for me a confirmation that we are going to see a hundred thousand us dollar bitcoin and if you like these videos, make sure to leave a thumbs up, guys. That is very much appreciated. And if you want to stay connected with me during this bull market, make sure to subscribe down below. Then, guys, let's go to the S&P 500. We do see some interesting things right here as well. We did get a nice bounce. We were bullish on the S&P 500 right here at these lows. Right now, we do get some resistance from the daily EMA ribbon. And we were not able to fill this gap yet. So that might, um, that might show us that there's still some more upside for the S&P 500. We do flip some form of resistance right now into support. So it's very interesting to watch this chart as well. Then, guys, I want to bring you to your attention to the following um, article. This is an article that I made in a partnership or, yeah, basically in um, cooperation with BitcoinMagazine.com. I don't know if you know the website. 
but we basically uh, one of the analysis that I'm doing right comparing Bitcoin to the internet bubble I made a more yeah written article right here over on the website and let's just go a little bit through this article because I think it is very very interesting and I might uh, blow your mind with some things that you haven't think of before so the title is the Bitcoin 16 year cycle and its correlation to the internet bubble. I will drop a link to this uh, article also in the description. I would appreciate it guys if you would share this over on Twitter and tag me. Uh, you can just do that by clicking on this button right here. Uh, but the basic thing is actually that yeah, everyone heard about the four year cycle. It's almost getting mainstream news, right? Yeah, Bitcoin. Oh yeah, the four year cycle of Bitcoin. Yes, it's, it's really mainstream news, right? So the regular four year cycle, as we all know it, is a three year cycle up, followed by a one year decline. Three years up, one year decline. And the crazy part is, guys, is that actually we have seen something similar with the dot com bubble. And the crazy part is also that the dot com bubble also was a new technology like Bitcoin, right? It was a new disruptive technology, the internet, suddenly connecting the whole planet together. Bitcoin suddenly changing the whole monetary system of the planet, right? So they, are, they were both very disruptive technologies. And what's interesting with that is that when you have this disruptive te technologies, you have a big group of people that is anticipating this innovation. Right. And based on that anticipation, they are investing and they are investing with their emotions. Right. So you have this small group of people that that anticipate the early adopters. They invest and it goes grow and it grabs media attention because the price increases. And then, you know, it goes down. It has these apps app and flow, basically. And. The crazy thing is that the dot com bubble kind of looks very similar if you look at the first 12 years to that of Bitcoin. Why? Because the dot com bubble also went through four year cycles. The declining phases in the dot com bubble were a little bit shorter, um, shorter lived. But uh, we have roughly four years from the low to the next low with a three years uptrend and roughly a one year downtrend. But like I said, that one year downtrend often was less than one year. But the thing was at the last four year cycle, when we were topping out in the dot com bubble, we actually saw this flipped. So we had a shorter bull market followed by a multi-year long bear market and i think that uh, no matter how you're going to spin it i think on bitcoin this is also going to happen in the crypto space there will come a moment that from this longer secular bull market that we are in there will come a moment that we are going to see a multi-year long bear market and that is a market where where a lot of yeah the whole market will be reset basically i don't think it's going to happen yet but there are some signals that actually say that, yeah, maybe we are already seeing that now. So that's the crazy thing. So this is a uh, Microsoft um, stock. Also very similar, guys. We have a four-year cycle, which is called, uh, yeah, right translated, basically. That is when the top occurs in the last half of the cycle. And when it's left translated, it means that the top occurs in the first half of the uh, cycle. So we have also right translated, first four-year cycles, second four-year cycles, uh, right translated. The third is right translated. But the fourth on Microsoft was left translated. It took basically a very long time for Microsoft to reach these levels again. And we never surpassed those levels again in valuation. So that's also important to note. Um, that you can see right here. Microsoft, is this the chart of Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft topped right here. And this is also taking uh, the money, money to supply into consideration right here. But it took we never surpassed the highs of the 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 top in the dot com bubble and that is kind of crazy because that is a little bit an illusion that we are living right now in today's society everyone sees the dot com bubble as something yeah that was in the past and a uh, crazy mania of the internet but um we had that recession we had the correction and now we actually like way way past that but actually it's not true because the the economic situation back then when the dot-com bubble was at its peak was the highest valuation of the S&P 500 since ever. We haven't seen a higher valuation of the S&P 500 if you take the M2 money supply into consideration. So here you can see that. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit if I can do that with Microsoft. Right? Microsoft topped here. 
I think the uh, the uh, the SP 500 looks kind of similar in terms of top. We topped here, right here. We we yeah we did surpass the top slightly coming down. Right now we're trading back above. So it took basically 23 years, 21 years to come back to that level. But you see, we have this very big U shape pattern, and it's not that people don't use Microsoft, right? I mean, Microsoft is kind of like. Uh, yeah big company everyone is using a computer software uh similar as apple so yeah it's not that it's not that the adoption of the technology doesn't continue it's just that the anticipation of the investors reached its peak and it needs time to just calm down you know and even though when it's calming down the adoption continues people continue to to use it that doesn't mean that uh, the price necessarily has to go up in the shorter term or midterm time frame because we had a secular bull market which is just a bull market of anticipation you know price going up going up going up similar as we are seeing with bitcoin we have already for 12 years that the price is going up there has to come a time that we are finishing a secular bull market and that after maybe 14 years of price going up we are going to see a longer amount of years the price is going to go down so there's a lot of confluence between the cycles if we look at the structure from the dot-com cycle and microsoft and the s p 500 during the time frame and bitcoin so that is just uh, very very interesting and yeah so there are a couple of scenarios possible right so if we have a regular four-year cycle uh, it actually says that we would have an uptrend until 2025, a regular four-year cycle, followed by a one-year decline. This is a typical four-year cycle, which we've seen three times in the history of Bitcoin. Is this possible? Yes. Is this likely? Um, I don't know. I don't think we are going to follow an exact four-year cycle. I think this cycle will be different, and I think this cycle will be characterized or ha will would have the characteristic of a more heavier bear market than we have seen in the history of bitcoin that's what i think um the 16 year cycle that we have been talking about would be more similar to the dot com where we'd have the last the last cycle flipped right where we have like one year uptrend and a three year downtrend or maybe one and a half year uptrend two and a half year downtrend i think it's also possible that we are going to see a combination so some not a combination but something in the middle between a regular four-year cycle and a 16-year cycle so that we do get a prolonged bear market that bear market will last longer than one year maybe one and a half year maybe two years maybe even two and a half years who knows but that um that 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 there will be a prolonged bear market basically and for bitcoin to top it's also going to be important in what kind of acceleration we are going to meet the the coming months or the coming years because if we would accelerate like for example from today we would just break out and start to rally and go back to the all-time highs i i wouldn't expect bitcoin to see very high levels in during that bull market because that acceleration would be too fast that would be more like a 16-year cycle right at one year up and then followed by three years down so the longer the later bitcoin is going into that acceleration phase of the bull market i think the higher we can actually go in this bull market and the sooner we are going to get that acceleration phase the lower the potential top will be for bitcoin uh, then I also have an article in the article I write down right here how you can spot the top and of course guys this is also a very important link because this is going to the will portal website which basically shows you where in the cycle we are right 16 year cycle we are approaching the red uh, area right here four year cycle we still have some time and there are some other ways to spot the top for example you can use the funding rates and i'm explaining that here in the article which is uh, interesting then we have some further considerations and these are actually very 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 important but two things guys first thing i want to show you is this and this is actually i don't know i i really like to discuss this with you because i'm in crypto since 2016 
I was actually already interested in, two, in 2015 in Bitcoin, but the moment I really jumped into a crypto was 2016. And I, and, I, and I lived through the 2017 bull market. And I think a lot of you that are still here also lived through that bull market. And if you haven't lived through that bull market, um, it was a crazy time. But if you did live through that bull market, I really want to hear your opinion down below in the comments because this is the Bitcoin exchange trade volume measured in US dollars. So not in Bitcoin, because when you measure in Bitcoin, it can be very confusing, but we're just looking in US dollar terms, right? In US dollar terms, the 2017 bull market had a higher trading volume if you look at the average trading volume. So not if you look at the acute trading volume, because there was a higher spike in this bull market. But just as an average, then the bull market in 2017 and 18 had more volume than the previous bull market. And that is kind of scary. Because that means that even though the price of Bitcoin did went higher, we already seeing a decline in the uh, activity, right? And also in the Google searches, if you look at Google searches online, you will also see that 2017 has a higher peak than the previous bull market. So this is something to consider that we might already have seen the peak of this business cycle in 2017 and 2018. That doesn't mean that Bitcoin cannot surpass its all-time highs again, uh, but it's just something to consider. Something to um, to consider. Another thing to consider is, of course, the Federal Reserve, because we have seen that the previous bull market of Bitcoin was completely led by the Federal Reserve. And that's also interesting because 2017-18 was not really led by the Federal Reserve, but this bull market was led by the Federal Reserve. Um, why? Because of the flu in 2020, we had this massive crash. Then we printed lots and lots of money. The money went into the risk on assets like stock market. So you can basically see the moment the money printer went on, that is the moment uh, that is right here during that March 2020 crash. That is the moment we start to rally. So the Bitcoin topped at 69K, right? But if you again take inflation into consideration, that top was way lower. The top, like if you would compare that with the money supply of 2017, the top might be at 30,000 US dollars. So, or maybe 30 or 40. So, it would be slightly higher than the previous high. So, yeah, guys, this is very interesting material because no one is approaching the markets from this perspective. You gotta dare also to look a little bit at the ugly side, right? Is there an ugly side? How does it look? Like, I think this is definitely some some signs. Yeah, we yeah, that's what that's why I want to know your opinion. You know, you were there 2017. Let me know your experience because from my experience, that bull market was crazy. It was really crazy. Last bull market was crazy too. Don't get me wrong, but 2017 it really felt like it really felt like every day your mind was blown. Like whoa, whoa, like it was really crazy. Um, yeah, so. Let me know what you think, guys. Uh, let me know anyhow what you think about this article. I spent a lot of time on this article, and this article is not even complete because I have more, I have more um, pictures, more charts, more data that I have to back this stuff up. I was not allowed to put it in this article due to multiple reasons, but it just it became very long. This article, so they have like an amount of words. They want to keep a limit, but there's a lot of important information that I haven't put in this article, which I have, which is backing up this stuff kind of crazy. So I will talk about that in the future. So let me know if you're interested in that. Let me know down below if you like me to talk about that as well. Read this article, share it over on Twitter. I would highly appreciate it. Uh, tag me so you can just click right here on this Twitter and it will automatically uh, say the Bitcoin 16 year cycle and its correlation to the internet bubble via the blockchain. So it will automatically um, tag me. So uh, yeah, guys, I would highly appreciate if you do so, so other people get aware of it as well. And we can get this discussion on going. Guys, later today, I'm going to, uh, or actually right now, I'm going to post an altcoin in will alerts the private telegram channel which you can join right now and even get paid for joining 20 us dollar tether by bybit 
I'm going to post an altcoin setup that is looking very, very, very bullish crazy bullish in this bear market bitcoin is going down and everything is breaking down there's one altcoin that looks really bullish and i might even consider to put a big part of my huddle portfolio into this altcoin which is something i not quickly do if you know me i'm kind of a toxic bit bitcoin maximalist but this altcoin just looks if i look to the charts so good and has performed pretty well in bear markets that i'm definitely doubting um to uh to put some money to put a part of my portfolio other portfolio in that uh, for the next coming months so if you want to know that outgoing guys make sure to join will alert you can join so by following the instructions down below joining bybit bitget or femix and apply for will alerts over on willportal.com and if you guys can uh, guess the altcoin in the comment section i might make a separate video on it on the channel in a later stage as well we have some time okay guys i want to wish every single one of you a beautiful day today and i hope to see every single one of you in the next video